Happy New Year to you. Welcome to Witness the Fitness Podcast. In today's episode, we're going to do what we, uh, or what everyone does it in the new year, and that's look back a little bit and reflect and look forwards a little bit and put a plan of action together. That's pretty much going to be the theme throughout today's episode. So we're going to look at some highs and lows of 2023, some of the adventures that we've been on. I've been and done some numerous um, High Rocks events abroad, as well as in the UK. So I'll be chatting about them. I'll chat about how, you know, the successes and trials and tribulations of Witness the Fitness Studios in Nottingham and the members that we've got and the, the things that they've achieved and the challenges they've took on and, and smashed. And then we'll look forward to actually... 2024 and and getting the most out of the year up and coming and importantly I'm going to go through goal setting and making sure that you understand how to set goals and smash them to absolute pieces rather than just kind of have some irrelevant New Year's resolution that you don't really stick to. We're not about that, we're about getting results and we will look at that. So let's get into it, let's go! So 2023 has been an absolute epic year really if I'm honest when I look back it's been such an adventure and overall I've looked back at this year and been really just content happy and pleased with with progress for myself um, that's from a personal standpoint my own health and fitness that's from a professional standpoint in terms of the amount of people that's come into witness the fitness training studios and worked with me and the other coaches to develop their own kind of health and fitness and build towards goals it's been an amazing year from that standpoint. And then professionally, obviously, that then reflects on the business. So my my business has grown uh, a little bit, which is always fantastic, if I'm honest. So the overall consensus summary of 2023 is a, it's been a really solid year. But the standout for me as an individual was definitely the the High Rocks events that we, we booked and did abroad. So those that don't know High Rocks, High Rocks is basically a, a fitness event, um, a fitness competition, mainly based around running. So you'll run between eight kind of functional workouts, including skis, sled pushes, sled pulls, rowers, burpees, those kind of things. Check it out if you're if you're not sure what it is, why am it in Google? But it's a really fun event. It does challenge you. You need a strong baseline of running to do it well. Although, you know, you don't have to be super fit to do it, but you do need a level of uh, to get around in one piece. Um, and we've done, we've done some abroad um, and we've done some in the UK, but the abroad ones stand out for, uh, for numerous reasons. Um, I, I did find them more enjoyable. Now, I don't know whether that was because some of it was... I was just not in it, you know, it was pretty much like a little holiday, really. We went for long weekends and it was fantastic to kind of take in different bits and pieces, different cultures, different, you know, kind of way of life, surroundings, environment, and then go and do the event. Um, but the ones in the UK, why they're, they're so popular at the moment, you know, they're absolutely rammed. And I think the biggest thing that set the ones that I did abroad apart was they wasn't as busy and you know they were still busy but they wasn't as busy and you got more of the the feel for what was going off and you could spectate a little bit easily without kind of hordes of people so at the, at the start of the year and um, we went and did one in Barcelona there was only a uh, a small team of us we booked a long weekend away um, to the city of Barcelona in Spain we stayed a few nights, and obviously, when the when the Saturday came around, uh, we did we did the High Rocks event, and it was amazing. Obviously, it was lovely and warm, which always helps. But I just found the event itself. When I compare it to the UK ones, it you know I'm not saying it was relaxing, but the approach it wasn't as manic because there wasn't as many people. It was busy, but it wasn't crazy busy. So when we were spectating, you know, one another and just viewing one another compete it was a lot easier to get round and you weren't kind of hoarding through people to get to kind of see your friend complete the broad jump burpees or or push the nice big heavy sled 
And then when it came to the event itself, there were less people on the, the running course, meaning you could actually run. You know, it's, you know, I'm saying you can't run in the UK ones. You can, obviously, but it's a lot busier. So, you know, I've done some UK ones where you're kind of a little bit of slaloming in between people because it's busy, you know, and it's, you know, very much a, a, a privilege of being not as busy where you could pretty much just run in a straight line without too much kind of bobbing and weaving between people. So the Barcelona one for that element was, was amazing. Um, obviously it made preparation a little bit tougher because you're in a, a foreign country that knows that know me know that my body don't really like gluten it doesn't digest very well so therefore kind of meeting that demand and um, kind of the dietary requirements and timings being abroad it does make it a lot tougher so obviously being at home that problem's a lot easier to solve than it is abroad. So while abroad was amazing, it does have some, you know, challenges that, that were met. And, it, and you know, I absolutely love the Barcelona. It just topped off that weekend overall. And I got a PB there. You know, uh, I did it in one hour, 16 minutes, which was the best that I've, I've done to date. And then as soon as we'd done that, was like, we need to go abroad again. Where do we want to go? And then it's been quite recently. Uh, when, when did we go? It was November for my birthday. It was my birthday in November. And we, we planned to go to Hamburg. So that's the kind of the birthplace of High Rocks. So we was really interested to, to go there and, and take it there. And then when we, was, <laughs> when we was booking it, I had the great idea that all my High Rocks events have just been either the men's open. So you do it solo on your own. Uh, and the you know the kind of basic weights, or I've done it in, I've done it in mixed doubles, and I've done it in um, men's doubles. But this this one because I thought you know what's my birthday, I'm going to treat myself, I'm going to treat it, and I'm going to absolutely smash it. I booked in for the the men's high rocks pro, which then kind of steps it up, and I was really excited because while while that men's open is. Is, is challenging. My physical capabilities at the moment, I know full well that I could probably rock up later today and complete it without too much worry. It's not beyond my capabilities. With a Hyrox Pro, because of some of the, the sled pushers and the pulls and the increase in weight, there was a, a, a little question mark for me within myself whether I could just, can I just rock up? And it's like, well, no, you're gonna have to do some training. So this was the first one where I was like really excited and really like, Oh, a little bit anxious because you're going to have to build up your training. You're going to have to, you know, because of the impact of the exercises being a lot more in the body because it's heavier, it's going to take a bigger toll. Then my running's going to have to be better as well. So I was really excited slash nervous to take on that adventure. Uh, and then when we got there, um, initially I was super disappointed with the 8 p.m. start time for the, my, my wave in the men's pro, because I'm like, oh my God, I've got all day. And then we've, you know, there was four of us that went to Hamburg in the end. Liam was on in dead early in the morning, so Liam, one of the members, he smashed it. But we was there early to see him, and then the ladies were on a little bit later on in the afternoon. So it was just a case of me waiting all day and, and sorting my food. So that initially put us like, oh my God, that's, that's such a long day. I need to kind of make sure my energy levels don't burn out. But it was a blessing because on the morning of, I remember waking up and the hotel room, it was lovely, but I just didn't sleep well at all. And I was just tossing and turning. That was a few nights preceded. We got there on the, the Thursday, I believe it was. So we had the Thursday night, Friday night, and then, you know, had two nights where I didn't sleep well because I just, it was just uncomfortable, the bed. It, you know, you can't beat your own bed, can you? And it want my own bed, obviously. And then when I got there to spectate and watch Liam in the morning, part of me, a big part of me was like, thank God I'm not on till later on this evening because I feel absolutely knackered. I didn't feel great at all, simply because my sleep pattern was, was messed up. And I thought, at least this way, we can watch Liam, we can get some food, I can go back to the hotel and, and just try and get a little bit more sleep. And then once I'd gone back and actually had a nap, I was, I was right. I was so weirdly, even though I was on dead late at night, for that day, it worked for absolute perfectly for me. It was, a, it was a weird godsend where at first I was kind of like, oh, you know, I'm not looking forward to it. I don't want to go on that late because it's a lot more of a, a, a logistical challenge. But in the end, it was... It was the best thing that could have <laughs> could have happened for me. So we got, you know, enough that we got to the evening. So 
you know, the ladies were on, so Kat and Jody were on their thing, and then I'm like literally the last person to go out on the course. And yes, I was really nervous. Hamburg was amazing. The German people were super friendly, super friendly. You know, while their dialect can seem uh, abrupt and to the point, you know, that's just the way it sounds. They're amazing bunch of people. And there was nothing but kind of smiles. And as soon as they, they kind of work out that you're, you're from the UK, they're just interested and smiling and happy to be there. So I'm in the warm up area, warming up, you know, and uh, a few people trying to talk to me. I don't speak German at all. You know, I, I did it, I'm sure, did I do it at GCSE? Can't remember a bit of it. Shows you <laughs> how much that sets in after a few years. But yeah, I know, really sorry, I can't understand your English. And then they just, they'll scrum, scramble some out, you know, wish you good luck. And then I got to the start line and I just had this weird, what is it about weird? This confidence go over me like, you know what? You're ready for this, Pete. You've done your training. You know it's going to be challenging. I want you to find your pace. I want you to find your rhythm and just sustain it. And off I went. And I absolutely loved Hamburg High Rocks doing the men's pro. It is by far the most challenging one I've had to date. And it was mo by, by far the most rewarding. But the standout moment, and I've told this to people that I've spoke to in person, the standout moment wasn't my workout. It was another competitor's. <laughs> Let me tell you about this story because I find it so motivating to kind of keep myself on track and keep doing what I do regularly. And I'm hoping you find it um, hopefully just as inspiring as I did. So I'm running round the course and there is clearly, you know, I'm in my late 30s and there is an older gentleman, bold head, good thick set of shoulders on him, but he's, I'm like, late 50s, early 60s and he's absolutely kicking ass. And then it kind of I dawned on me like, you know what, he's doing absolutely amazing simply because He's, he's going to be about twice my age and he's doing exactly what I'm doing. And I've got, you know, age technically on my side, but yet stride for stride, he stayed with me. Throughout the whole entire race, as we went into the stations as such, so you're, doing, you're doing your 1,000 metres run. It always kind of just overtake me, this 60 odd year old man, he would just overtake me as we're going into the kind of rock zone, so the way you go into the workouts. And then we would pretty much start the workout area, so whether that be the skis, the sleds, the burpees, the rower, he'd always start slightly in front of me. I would always finish before him, get out early, start running, and then by the time I'm just about to go in, he's either just ahead of me, because he's overtook me, or just behind me. By the end of the race, I finished a mere, a, meager, a mere three seconds ahead of him. Now, I was conflicted, <laughs> or my ego was, because part of me was like, that is absolutely incredible. I hope to God that I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. You know, I train regularly, I, I, I eat well. I'm hoping by the time I eat my 60s, I'm in that kind of shape because it is incredible. And then the other part of me ago went, and remember, Pete, you're literally half his age, pretty much, give or take. Do not, and excuse the term, that old man <laughs> finished before you. And part of me was like, I know it's only three seconds, but I'm 38. That guy's in his 60s. I should, but I keep myself fit. I fame myself on my level of fitness. And here's this 60 year old man. He's in great nick, don't get me wrong. You can't discredit that whatsoever. But my ego is like, you cannot let that happen. Make sure you finish ahead. And while the wall balls right at the end of her, I made sure <laughs> that I pushed it out and finished and got over that finish line before him, even if it was by a three seconds. But when I think about this 60, whatever he was, um, and I thought I was 60 because in the, in, the, in the race stats, they give you a leaderboard on High Rock, so you can kind of click in, see how you've done, see the people finishing around you. And then when I've looked at the kind of uh, list of finishers, he was uh, one or two down from me with that three seconds, and it was clearly it was him because of, he was the only one 
in the 60 bracket was that was even in the list um so you could you could see you know his breakdowns and bits and pieces that's how i knew he was he was in his 60s and then i started to think about other 60 year olds i know and you know i'm sure you're the same you know think about just the average 60 year old that you know what, what's the condition like and here we've got this guy is in absolutely fantastic shape you know do you really think that he struggles to get out of bed i know loads of 60 year olds that that do that and you know how many 60 year olds do you know that could push a 200 kg sled along with all the the running and everything else it was pretty incredible but it should be really inspiring to you that there is people out there that have that level of fitness now i don't know this individual that 60 year old german guy i've got no idea who he is but i know exactly how he's done what he's done and it's really simpler he has been active and looked after his body and ate well for long periods of time if not his whole life now i i don't know that guy but i've seen it done before and i've seen the kind of the crumbs the evidence that's there and the only way that you can do what he's done is by long-term commitment consistency and discipline to his own health and fitness and that should be really inspiring to you the listeners that if you just keep doing what you're doing in terms of health and fitness lifting some weights doing some cardio going for running pushing pulling stuff that you're investing in yourself and you won't necessarily you know always going to be motivated but you won't necessarily get the benefit straight away the benefit comes later and that's the bit that puts people off because they don't get immediate gratification. They want it now. And health and fitness is not about that. And that 60-year-old German guy is a, is a shining example of do some stuff today that your future self, as you age, is really going to thank you for. And it was a really important message to me. And like I say, all I'd done was this event with this other German guy that was twice my age pretty much. But it was a shining example to me. It was a motivator. I was inspired by it to keep doing what I'm doing for the rest of my life. And then we, we finished Hamburg. Amazing city, really interesting city. Um, Germany is an interesting country. You know, at the moment, they're not doing great economically. There was a lot of homeless people. Things were very expensive, but it was a really welcoming city. The, the kind of, the way the architecture the buildings and stuff it was amazing some amazing sites the christmas markets why they weren't open when we was there they was putting them up and they was everywhere and they looked big and spectacular so both barcelona and hamburg was amazing and funny enough we've already <laughs> we've already booked for 2024 at the end of feb start of march uh, i can't remember the exact date we're going to poland we're going to poland to do high rocks there's a small little group of us so in the last year and a bit we're doing a little bit of jet setting with the high rocks we've done barcelona we've done hamburg and then we're going on to poland next but yeah so far high rocks hamburg doing the men's pro for me personally was my standout moment for 2023 it's time Let's go! When I look at the achievements of the studio and the people within it, it has been an absolutely amazing year. We've had loads of new faces come in and overall the studio has grown and our community has grown and if I'm honest it's become the best it has been to date. I was speaking to one of my long-term regulars, Ruth, and we was just talking about how it's just amazing at the moment that everyone is on a, just on a level, really positive, really friendly, want to work out, want to make some difference to their life and are willing to put in that work. And we've got that across the board, everyone that interacts with the studio, and it's fantastic. We've helped people's mindsets in terms of become more motivated have a more disciplined life and get some amazing results we've helped people lose some serious amount of inches we've helped people get super strong we've helped people train for for events and overall we've had some absolutely outstanding progress but i want to just take a moment to tell you about how 
our actual member of the year winner for 2023 because I think that his his story and the reason why he won the award is exemplary it really does stand out of you know if you just kind of decide really in your mind like no questions no debate you've just decided you're going to do something and you go at it with the ups and downs you still get at it you can achieve some amazing things so Mark Dean was our 2023 Member of the Year Award. Now, obviously, a lot of you won't know who Mark Dean is, but that's kind of irrelevant. What's important, not, sorry, Mark, you're not irrelevant, but the fact of who you are is irrelevant. What's, what's important is your story, because that's what's inspiring and that's what's motivating and that's what we're going we're gonna to talk about. Now, I first met Mark, it wasn't even within a... Um, a fitness environment. So those that know me fairly well know I'm actually a qualified teacher and I taught <laughs> for seven years. I taught seven years um, delivering fitness qualifications. So I help um, people become personal trainers and, and, and different kind of fitness careers get involved into it. So I did that for quite a, quite a long time. And I actually met Mark on a teacher training course. So when I was still doing my teacher training, went into, into, into learn myself and met Mark there. Now, everyone knows that Mark's wife, so everyone from the studio knows that Mark's wife started at the studio before Mark did. And everyone assumes that Sarah, Mark's wife, introduced Mark to me in the studio, but it's actually in reverse. <laughs> when I met him at this, on this teacher training, Mark was like, you know, so tell me a bit about yourself. We're chatting over the weeks. And I just said, well, you know, this... The teaching malarkey, well, I enjoy it, it's not really for me and I'm actually, I've got a fitness studio and I do this, this, this and this and I help people get fit and I'm, I'm looking to grow that and then move from the teaching into just owning my own studio. And he was like, oh, amazing, amazing. And he told Sarah, his wife, because it was literally down the road, my studio was down the road from where they lived. So while everyone thinks that Sarah introduced Mark to the studio because she was here training first, it's actually a complete reverse opposite. Mark introduced Sarah to me and she then came in. And at that point, Sarah was training versus Mark never came down. And then he just hit an epiphany point where he'd done a few sessions in the past, but he hit an epiphany point where he was like, I'm going to need to get fit. I want to get fit. I need to lose some weight. And I want to get in super, I want to get in super shape. And he signed up. And since he signed up, he has not looked back. You know, he never really regularly trained. He did a lot of walking, a lot of hiking and stuff. But in terms of lifting weights, in terms of doing cardio, he was pretty much starting from scratch. And over the weeks, he started to realize that he wanted to do a High Rocks event as well and actually booked in with us to do a High Rocks solo in Birmingham in October. So this was towards the start of the year that he'd booked that in. We booked it early, I think it was like Jan, Feb time. And so he's like, yep, I need to get super fit to do this. So we got into training, he's doing loads of group sessions. He had some PT to help with his movement and deal with some kind of posture and knee pain and back pain he was having. And slowly but surely we get on top of that. Alongside that, he's losing shed loads of weight. And uh, to the year to date, he's lost over uh, six kg in weight. His body fat's reduced loads. His shape's changed, he's looking super strong. Now we're building up to the High Rocks event and Mark gets the bug. And the bug is the best thing ever when you start with your health and fitness because you'll just want more. And as long as you direct it in the right sense, you're gonna absolutely love it and you're gonna stay super disciplined and, and, and stick to the actions that you know is in your best interest. But Mark started booking in for all sorts of events. We've done Decker Fit, Decker Strong, Affex Games, and this was all before the High Rocks. So we started the year going, look, we're gonna work through, get to this point, and then we'll do that event. And because things are going that well, and he's really motivated, he was like, I need to do other events. And we went to a place called Cliff Row to do our um, Decker Fit. So Decker Fit's a bit like High Rocks, but it's, not the same exercises, it's a shorter distance, it's, it's seen more like a sprint. But he's going in and he's absolutely smashing these events out, he's, he's loving it, it's really inspiring him to stay on top of it. And he just grows as, as a person in terms of a physical fitness sense, is massively 
supportive of everyone around him in the studio, really friendly. And just to see him from the start of the year, you know, not being, we'll just say not in great shape, only just starting out, to then rapidly progress, get some amazing results, book in a, a shed load of events, turn up to them, absolutely smash them out, was all inspiring. And for me, the lesson is, no matter what condition you're in right now, it is completely irrelevant. What matters is the way you see yourself moving forwards. What kind of level of fitness you want? What do you want to get out of, well, let's just say life. What do you want to get out of it? And importantly, what's your plan like? How are you progressing forwards? Are you pushing yourself? Are you progressing yourself? And if you can do that, you can achieve some absolutely outstanding things. We've literally just took Mark from doing nothing to going, let's just do this one event. And as he goes through the process, he just pushes more and more boundaries. Now, Mark, and he'll hate for me to say this because, you know, he ain't unique. It's not unique. Everything's really simple to do. How do you do that? How has Mark done that? This is as simple as it is. He turned up regularly, trained regularly. Even when he couldn't be asked, he turned up and he trained. Over time, he made some distinct, simple, positive, healthy changes to his food and diet. There's some things that he, he cut out in terms of, we'll just say, bad habits, and some things that he introduced that was generally better from a health-wise. And he did that over time. Now, I know that while the rhetoric and the talk around it is very simple, and it is, the action's hard because the action takes discipline, motivation, consistency, all the bits that people struggle with. But you should take the lesson as no matter what you want to achieve, you can do it as long as you work on the stuff that results in, or the actions that result in the outcome that you want. It's really important that you focus on action and not, not the result. It's like if you, was, if you was going on a weight management goal, the last thing that you want to do is continue to weigh yourself. And that's what most people do. They're on a weight management resort. I want to drop my weight and my body fat. So I'll continue to weigh myself to see if I'm on progress. And that act. So let's say you stand on some scales. How does standing on scales help you manage your weight? It doesn't. It'll probably just frustrate you or stress you out. But if you focused on the actions that resulted in what you want, and what do we know that? So if you want to lose weight or weight manage or reduce your body fat, what actions should you be focused on? Well, you should be focused on training regularly and making some small positive changes to your food and diet. And when you focus on them, funny enough, when you come back to, let's just say, weighing yourself further down the line, you will have lost and managed your weight better. And that's the same no matter what your goal. So let's take Mark's goal, smashing out them high rocks. Was he just continually worrying about the high rocks? No. He turned up regular, even when he couldn't be asked. So overall, Mark's story and our member of the year for 2023, I find it inspirational because it shows you that no matter where your starting point is, if you just put a methodical plan in place and stick to it and give it time and patience, you can achieve whatever you want to achieve. And Mark's not the only one we've had at the studio that's got absolutely outstanding results. We've had couples, men, women, all ages, all different starting points. We've had people that have literally never exercised, ever. So, you know, I've got one member who's in her 50s and for the whole of her life she's never stepped foot in a gym, she's never really trained and she has just started her journey out. Now, my job is to help her understand her starting position and what progression is going to look like because sometimes she does get a little bit frustrated like why can't I do what they're doing and why do I find this so hard and it's because she hasn't had enough practice yet and she needs to give herself time but to the reason why we talk about this is to understand that it don't matter about your starting point what matters is the progressive steps forwards and then we've helped people that have had a history, like I used to be super fit 10 years ago, or whatever it is. And again, if you've done it once, you can do it again. So just get back on track. Now for anyone that's looking back and want to achieve something they previously had, one thing I like to do with them is forget the past.
Now we need to reflect on it. And, you know, we're doing that in today's episode. You know, we're reflecting back on ourselves. But it should only be a glance. And a lot of people fixate on the past and where they used to be, and it's not helpful. So what I say to these people is, no matter where you were previously with your health and fitness, even if it's somewhere you want to get back to, glance, forget about it. All that matters is right here and now, the starting position you're in, the starting point you're on, and importantly, how you're going to progress forwards. Let go of the past, plan for the future, work on the now, work on the today, the actions for today, and you will achieve what you set out to do. To do. Will it be easier? Definitely not. Will it take time? Yes, it will. Will it be worth it? Oh my God, it's more than worth it. Start today. Now, if you've got a inspirational story, it might be your own, your own journey over the last year. What's it been like? Have you achieved some amazing things? I'd love to hear about them. I'd love to share them. Or do you know someone else that needs a shout out? You know, they don't want to feel egotistical by sharing your own. Do you know like a family or a friend that's done absolutely amazing over the last year and their story is worth sharing because it can inspire and it can motivate others to do the same. Get in touch with me. You can message me, you can email me and I will share your stories in the next episode. If you've got one that's going to inspire and motivate, I want to hear it. It's time for Goal Setting. Let's go. So all this talk about kind of New Year's resolutions and achieving targets comes down to one simple thing, planning. And to plan effectively means to you need to goal set effectively. And it's exactly what this next chapter is about. Smart targets, smart goals. Now, usually when I say that to people, they, they kind of go, Ooh, or switch off. Now, listen to me. If you really want to achieve something this year, 2024, then you really need to take goal setting seriously. Let me give you an example of what most people's goal setting looks like, and it's atrocious. So I'm in a business where I'm regularly asking people, what do you want to achieve? What are your goals? And some of the kind of answers I get are really, really basic and don't actually help build up or in no way, shape or form look like a smart target. And therefore, if it's not a good plan, the chances of being successful are really low. So some of the responses are like, I just want to get fit or I just want to lose weight. I just want some muscle mass. And those statements are just that. They're just statements and they don't really hold any kind of detail and you can only really achieve something or plan something if you've got some detail in there. So this is where smart targets come in and those that don't know what a smart target is, it's really simple. It's an acronym. The S stands for specific. Make your goal detailed. The M stands for measurable. You need to be able to kind of Measure it in some way. The A and the R stands for achievable and realistic. And we'll talk about what the difference between them two terms in a moment. And then the T is time bound. You need a time frame in which you're going to try and achieve your goals. And then when you place all of these um, five things together, the specific, the measurable, the achievable, the realistic and the time frame, when you put them together, you will have some level of of smart target which will make sense and give you the structure needed to, to plan and, and move ahead. So let's let's add some detail to it. Let's give you some good examples that you can use to then create your own smart targets. So let's start with an easy one, the weight loss. Your target at the start was I need to lose some weight. Not really helpful. First one, let's make that specific. What do you mean weight loss? Now, usually when you dig deep, people are talking about body fat. So you want to reduce your body fat. Next thing, by how much? Now, this 
is where you may need help with someone like me or within the fitness industry that one can assess your body fat and you can do this in numerous ways. You can get some impedance scales with either your hold or your stand on, or you can get a body fat caliper test where they basically pinch an inch and they'll work out your body fat percentage. From that, you can then start planning forward and add more specific details. So I want to lower my body fat. Depending on exactly where that is, it depends on how far it needs to go. Now, for health parameters, most women should be between 20 and 25% body fat. For men, for health parameters, it should be somewhere between 15 and 20%. So let's say for argument's sake, you've had your body fat done and it's at 30%. We can now measure it. This is where you're at today, you're at 30%. And in the long term, you know, let's say we want to get it down to 20% because it's, I'm a male. So I need to lose 10%. But this is where achievable and realistic comes in. So I've now made it specific. I want to lose body fat and I want to lose 10%. Is that achievable and realistic? We may need to add the time frame in. So I want to do that within 12 weeks. Now, experience tells me that that is not achievable. Usually within 12 weeks, being a male, if you exercise regularly and make some good nutritional choices and get yourself in a bit of a deficit, you could probably lose four, maybe 5% of that body fat. So a more achievable target would be about 25%. So we're going to lose 5%. We're going to take it down from 30 to 25. Now, the realistic bit is how, you know, for the want of a better word, realistic. How easy is it for you to apply that change? Now, I've just said you need to train consistently and regularly and you need to make some solid dietary choices and get yourself in some level of deficit. These are two big asks. Now, if you've got no experience and have never attempted a, we'll just say a fitness program or we'll just say a healthy eating program, if this is the first time you've done it, that might not be that realistic. And instead of 5%, because you're quite new to it, we might look at 3% overall. So all of a sudden, you understanding where your body fat is, where you want to take it down to, and the bits and pieces that are going to need to be to do it in terms of training regularly and building up your fitness level to be able to even train regularly, as well as make some positive changes to your food and nutrition and get yourself in that, that deficit, that's how you're going to lose body fat over time. But we also know that it's achievable and realistic within that time frame. So taking your body fat down from 30% to 27%, within a 10 to 12 week time period is definitely achievable and realistic. And notice how we go for our journey. So we start exercising, we start making some changes to our food. We can then measure that progress overall. We can redo the body fat analysis and then see how things are going and see how we need to change bits and pieces overall. Now, when you get started with your SMART goal, it's really important you then focus on the actions that result in the change you want and not just the change you want. Now, what I mean by that, most people focus on, you know, let's say they're monitoring the weight, which is a poor measure anyway, but they're monitoring the weight. You'll get these people that regularly weigh themselves. And my question to you is when you weigh yourself, the action of you getting on them scales how does that help you achieve your weight management goals? So you standing on weighing scales, how does that help you manage your weight? How does that help you actually lose body fat and weight? Simply, it doesn't. If you focused on the actions that do, so this is regular movement, training, exercise, eating healthily, monitoring calorie and portion input into your body. When you focus on those things, guess what's going to happen to the scales? Yes, they're going to go in the direction that you want. So once you've set these goals and you understand what we're trying to monitor, don't overly fixate onto it. We need to drop into the measurement 
every now and then just to see how things are developing and how our actions are working. To, but to be successful after your plan, you really need to just focus on the actions that build to the result you want and you will be successful. So let's have a look at another smart target away from weight management. Let's take a, a strength one. So I'll get some people where, what is your goal? I just want to get strong. And that's pretty much full stop. But what does that actually mean? Because when people say strong, it can kind of go one of two ways. They actually mean that they want to gain strength and have the ability and their muscles have the ability to shift resistance and weight and they literally want to get stronger. Or weirdly, they start talking about the way they look. And actually, when they talk about being stronger, they just want a better aesthetic look. Now, to a degree, these goals do go slightly hand in hand, but they're not exactly the same. So if I want to look aesthetically better, then yes, just doing some strength training will help that. But it's not the be all and end all because we know that for some aesthetic goals, and me personally, I don't advocate this. I don't think it's a good thing. You need to, you know, you know, you see these rippling abs and stuff. You need to go for a series of dehydrating the body to get that aesthetic look. So while you will go and do strength training to then achieve some of the aesthetic goals that you'll see on Instagram and all that jazz. A lot of the time they're really strict with their diet, like to the point where it's fucking boring just eating cardboard all the time pretty much. And then they go for a series of dehydration just so they can have some photo shoot with their rippling abs out. And then the, the moment they rehydrate, they won't look like that. And another example of that, I remember when those that are into MMA and know Conor McGregor, I remember when he was a, I think he was a lightweight and it was his, his first fights and he gets on the scales and he's absolutely ripped to shreds to the point where you go, wow, just there's not much of him there. And I can remember at that time, I had a client that sent me a picture of Conor McGregor where he stood on the scales, he's flexing his biceps, he's kind of screaming going, Aah! and his abs are ripped and he is seriously dehydrated at that point to meet the weighing scale demands that he has to hit for the fighting. And I turned around to my client and I messaged back and I basically went, look at him on the day of when he actually goes in to the ring to fight, he won't actually look like that anymore. And lo and behold, the next day when he goes into the octagon to fight, yes, he looks in great shape, but he's rehydrated and he is no way, shape or form as ripped and as predominant in the abdominal area than he was on weigh-in. So when we talk about coming back to strength goals, do you mean aesthetics, which part of me thinks anyway is a really poor form of goal, or do you actually mean strength, as in like the ability to shift weight? Now I'm hoping you're gonna go proper strength, I want the ability to shift weight. Because we can measure that. We can make it specific, we can measure it, and we can understand the progress overall. When we talk about making it specific, have you got particular movements that you want to gain strength in? So I want a stronger squat or bench press. And I might just pick one or two things, or even maybe just one, because it's similar or simpler to kind of attack initially. We then need to understand what we're going to measure. Where is your starting point? Well, let's say last time I went to squat and it was half decent. I could squat 30 kg for a good eight reps before my, my form disappeared a little bit. Okay, that's where we're starting. Over, let's say, three months, about 12 weeks, what could we increase that by? Now, this is a complex one because it does depend on the level of coaching, programming, how often you're doing strength training, really. You could quite easily, within three months, if you took it, we'll just say seriously, and did some really good programming, got a personal trainer like me to hold your hand, make all these, these tweaks. There was no reason why from 30 kg hitting eight to 10 reps, you could quite comfortably start squatting 50, 60 kg within that short space of time. Now, 
if you're a little less frequent, you haven't got, you know, um, the guidance and the programming, there's no reason why you can't hit 40 to 50 kg on that back squat weight. Whether it's achievable and realistic in that time, like I say, it depends on the programming and the guidance and, you know, we'll just say your starting position. Do you need to work on your hip mobility? What's your stability like in joints? All these questions need answering before we can really get a clearer point. But the, when we put in that time frame as well, we've got a clear kind of target where we're going to reassess, maybe do some max testing again to see where that strength lies. Now you can see that that, that process, that talking point overall, is a, there's a lot more detail there. It's a lot more specific in terms of the plan. And you have a better understanding of how you're going to actually go and do it. And then you start focusing on the actions again. Well, what's the actions? Well, I've just told you. Maybe go and get a personal trainer. Maybe go and speak to someone that has a better understanding of how to program. And then you need to turn up and put in the yardage. Now, improving your squat isn't just about doing loads of squatting. Obviously, you're going to need to squat, but there's also things like working on hip mobility, working on back mobility, working through different types of squatting, working through lunge patterns, developing core strength along with it, playing about with variation of, of weight and different training methods. This is where you may need that help to then build yourself up. But I'll guarantee the moment you start focusing on those things, your strength will improve. So let's reflect it back onto you. For this year, if you're really serious, and I mean serious about achieving your goals, it needs to be better than just some loose statement of, I want to lose some weight and I want to get strong. You need to be a lot more specific. I want you to grab an, a, a, a piece of paper and a pen right now and just start jotting down what you actually want and what it actually means in line with a SMART goal. Make it as detailed and specific as you can. Give me some numbers so we can measure it in some way. When you start talking about is it achievable and realistic, you need to start asking questions or writing down people that you might need to speak to. Or your starting point, how much experience have you got working on the thing? And then the time frame is like, well, when do you want to achieve this goal by? And then come back and go, in that time frame, is that realistic overall? Now, when you first do it, you might not have all the answers, but I can guarantee if you sit down and spend time just thinking about your goal and putting more meat on the bones, you will be a lot more successful or the probability of you being a lot more successful is going to be higher than just some crappy statement going, I want to lose some weight or I want to get strong. Spend time building up what your goal means and then importantly, focus on the actions and go and do it. But that's what I think. I want to know what you think as well. Have you set some poor goals in the past? Or have you set goals where you've been really successful in the past? And what did you do differently? Have you got some neat tips, tactics, tricks that you want to share with people on this podcast about achieving your goals? I would love to hear from you about your own planning and your own goal setting for this up and coming year 2024 you could even use this as an accountability tool if you just want me to kind of get your name out there and your goal so it creates a little bit of pressure and a little bit of accountability for you to actually pull your finger out and get on with your goal setting and I'm more than happy to do that get in contact with me either reach out on a message or email me if you need to and let's hear about you your planning and your goal setting it's time for motivation stories quotes and ramblings to get you going let's go with new year's resolutions in mind and the year 2024 ahead of us i just want to take a moment to just chat through a motivational quote that's kind of new year inspired so let's get ready for it here is your motivation for today a new year, a new chapter, a new verse, or just the same old story. Ultimately, we write it. The choice 
is yours to take. Now let that sink in for a second. If you truly want a different outcome for your life and you want to achieve something mean meaningful, whether that be fitness, health, work, family relations, it's down to you to do that. The choice is yours. You are in complete control of your thoughts and your habits and you can, it's not easy, but you can grab them by the scruff of the neck or you can keep doing what you have done and get the same results what those old habits give you. The choice is yours. Now, I know some people aren't ready to hear this message, but to successfully do that, you're going to have to hold up a mirror and face the truth. If you really want to change the same old story, I can guarantee you're going to have to come face to face with some uncomfortable truths about you that you're going to have to sort and fix. It's going to be slightly painful, slightly uncomfortable, but I'll guarantee it's worth it if you do it. The current version of you and the way you interact and the way you think is giving you the results that you've got over the last year. If that's not enough for you, if you want more and you deserve more, don't forget that. The power is in your hands. Take control. The choice is yours. A new year, a new chapter, a new verse or the same old story. If you're like me, I want a new verse. I want a new chapter. Will it be challenging? Will there be ups and downs? Of course they will. But that's what makes life special. That's what makes things that when we achieve things, that what makes them so amazing. And we get that kind of uplifting and that gratitude, the fact that you had to battle for them and change who you are. It boils down to if it was easy, anyone would do it, but it's not. And this is why people don't. But if you're not happy with your current predicament or you've got some serious goals, take that long, hard look at the reflection in the mirror, deal with the truth and push forwards to improve yourself and action it overall. For me, new year, new chapter, new verse is definitely the way forwards. Bigger, better, harder, stronger. Let's go. Now, when we talk about motivation for the new year, I'd love to know what things are you going to rely on? What things do you need that helps keep you motivated, that helps keep you inspired, um, that helps you push towards goals that's going to hold you accountable and you could take some of the things out of today's episode you know let's go back to let's go back to Mark Dean you know his story and what he's achieved we can use that as fuel for our own fire be inspired by that we can look back at the old German guy that I was competing against that's well in his 60s that was kicking butt and it was awe inspiring I can use that to inspire and motivate to make sure that this year as well as every year preceding it and to move ahead, I'm going to do the same. So what things motivate you? What things inspire you? What things are going to hold you accountable this year? I want to know so I can share them with our audience. Get in touch with me. Motivation, accountability, inspiration for 2024. Let me know what yours is. It's time for Food for Thought. Let's talk food, nutrition, and health. Let's go! So in today's food for thought section, I got asked a question literally just before the new year from, from a client that wants to really attack her food and nutrition again. And she basically went to me, what do I do, where do I start? January, I want, I want a better diet, I want a better nutritional input. Now, I approach this in the same way, no matter who you are. I've got some basic fundamentals and I'm just going to talk about one of the fundamentals today. And everybody, no matter who you are, what your nutritional 
plate is going to look like or your needs are. It doesn't matter at this early stage because you need to understand your starting point. So my first principle, and this is the only one I'm going to talk about today because this is something I'm going to talk about on, on more episodes further down the line in terms of changing your, your diet and your, your food intake. The first principle is knowledge and understanding. What I mean by that is you need to spend time really understanding and knowing what your diet looks like. Now, when I ask people that, like, what, what, what do you ingest? What does it look like on a day-to-day? -day? At best, they will let me know maybe 6 to maybe 70% of their diet. But if you was going to change something with only 70% of the view, what's the chances of you being successful? It's going to be quite low, in my opinion, and experience tells me that it is. So the first thing you need to do, and it could take as long as eight weeks, if I'm honest, it depends on how motivated you are and how accountable you are to yourselves. But the first thing is knowledge. You need to track your food intake and write it down. This is really important. I can't tell you how powerful writing it, writing it down is. People use apps, which are fine. I want you to use an app, but it shouldn't be your primary kind of recording tool. You're going to use an app to help speed up the process of well, how many calories are in that and what's in that but I just want you to jot things down not necessarily to change anything although you may as you see stuff but just to see where it is like I said it could take up to eight weeks if you do this well there's no reason why you can't do it in two or three weeks but the idea is you've written down in a journal or on just some bits of paper your Monday to Sunday over a couple of weeks and all you're going to look at is holes, how consistent it is, how erratic it is, how binge worthy it may be, what foods do you generally ingest, what foods are you clearly not ingesting. And to give you one story, it was quite a long while ago now, I spoke to a lady and when I was working on other food, I can't remember who it was, but I can just remember the conversation. We did our first consult and I was asking her about food choices, this, that and the other. You know, I'm talking about different food groups and I'll ask some basic questions like, would you say yeah, you eat fruit and veg daily? And she went, yes, you know, and I was asking a few other bits and pieces. Now, when I sent her away for a couple of weeks to just jot down her food plate, like, let's just write it down. When we come back to sit down together and actually look at the diary, Everything that we had talked about in that consult that she was adamant that she did, like, yes, I do that, was not in that food diary. She barely ate any fruit or veg at all. But yet, during the consult, she said she ate it regularly. Now, do you think that lady was intentionally trying to lie to me? No, of course she wouldn't. But what she thinks she does compared to what she actually does, are miles apart. So I don't care who you are, you will not under, understand your food intake and your diet 100% unless you spend time jotting things down and looking it hard in the face. You have to be honest. You have to be honest with everything that crosses your mouth. Just write it down. Not necessarily to change it at the start, but just to map out what it looks like. Now I guarantee once you've done that for maybe two, three weeks, hopefully, it'll only take that, could take longer, could take up to eight weeks, like I said. You'll then see a level of kind of, it'll be all over the shop in some way. Timings, food choices, amounts, calories. And it'll have an element of kind of binging because I've done this for around 20 years. And nine times out of 10, that's what people tend to look like. We've all got the same kind of problems in slightly different ways, but the same kind of problems. It's going to look all over the shop. You then need to go through a series of understanding. So the second part to this first principle, knowledge and understanding. Why does it look that way? Now this is important for when we're changing stuff. Because you may end up looking at your food plate and your diet and kind of going, well I didn't eat for long periods there because simply I was at work. And it was really hard for me at that time to actually get 
my lunch in, or the way work is, it's really not conducive to eating lunch. Understanding is going to help us put a plan of action together to break down these barriers to healthy eating. And you'll look at a whole host of different days, you know, different weeks, and just try and understand why are you eating what you're eating and when you're eating it. Now, when you get good at that, you'll get good at changing it. The first time you look at it, you may need help. You may need someone like me helping you look over it so you can understand it better. Because one pitfall I'll get, and one thing I see quite readily, is like later on in the evening, um, there's usually like poor food choices. So Pete, I love chocolate at that point. I'm a bit of a chocolate fiend and I just... I don't know why I smash it in and they'll look at that and they'll just see it as a mental weakness and they'll go I just need to stop eating chocolate now when I look at it I usually see different kind of things in play usually when someone's smashing chocolate or crappy food towards the end of the day it's usually because they've got an element of binge and they've actually gone through most of the day not eating enough calories or not eating enough quality of food and I've helped people get over their poor chocolate habits in later evening just by simply introducing healthy, consistent eating throughout the day. And it was amazing within a couple of weeks, just by introducing a healthy breakfast, whatever that means at this stage, a lunch that's then measured out. So we're eating well and we're trying to spread it out a little bit to sustain energy levels that we need in the day, especially when we're training. Once that's settled in a bit, because it does take a bit of time to change lifestyle and change eating patterns, it's amazing when we get to that stage that all of a sudden the chocolate ingestion and the chocolate fiend is no longer there. And we'll, look at, we'll be looking at food plates, uh, food diaries with my clients and I'll literally go, why aren't you eating chocolate anymore? And I'll usually get quotes like, I just don't fancy it. And it's smacks to me you know it's really obvious that when you don't eat consistently and you're binging the likelihood of you eating high sugar high fat content at inappropriate times is high but when you eat appropriately at appropriate times all of a sudden you're going to be sustained and poor habits will disappear so one way you can get rid of a chocolate fiend approach is not by wagging a finger at yourself going stop eating chocolate it's not good you actually approach that by going Instead of eating chocolate, let's try to eat more appropriately. Let's not worry about the chocolate. Let's not focus on the chocolate. Let's focus on the actions that stop us eating the chocolate, which is then looking at the meals proceeding before it, making sure I'm having good quality and the right amount needed for me. And like I say, you may need some help to do that and understand it. But that is your first stage. If you're moving through into January and you really want to make a positive change to your food and nutrition your starting point your starting point is always the first foundation what i set everyone up and it doesn't matter who you are male female tall small exercise a lot don't exercise at all got type 2 diabetes obese slightly overweight uh, got a thyroid condition it don't matter who you are at this stage because we're not necessarily looking to change anything we're just looking to see what your current habits are now write it down journal it record it use a, an app that will help so you can have full knowledge and full understanding of your food and dietary intakes so I want to hear what you are planning to do with your food intake. Are you, are you putting it off? You're not going to start in Jan because you've still got loads of chocolate left over from Christmas and you, you haven't got any willpower to actually get rid of it and you, you should have, you probably shouldn't have bought as much as you, you did, did you? And now you don't want to give it away or you don't want to chuck it away because you're wasting food. So you're just going to ingest it till you pile it on. Are you one of them? Are you going to delay this until Feb or even March before you take your health uh, and diet seriously? I want to hear from you. Why are you doing that? Why, why do you think that is? Or are you looking to action this? and get on, on top of it. Have you got any specific questions about what I've just covered? As always, get in touch with me and I shall feed them back into episodes. If you want to make 
dietary changes early in 2024, it always starts with knowledge and understanding of your current food habits. Let's go. So that is 2023, that is a wrap, and this is episode three, done and dusted. Really a big thank you for listening in and listening to me ramble on the Witness the Fitness podcast. Um, I've had quite a lot of questions that I will be answering in response to episode one and episode two. Uh, two of the main themes that we're going to be covering in episode four or I've had a lot of questions about protein in terms of how much, when can you have too much. Uh, so we're going to be delving into that. I've also had quite a lot of questions on supplementation, especially creatine. So we'll be covering them two elements amongst other discussions and ramblings on the Witness the Fitness podcast. Once again, thanks for tuning in. Have a fantastic 2024. All the best. Have a brilliant year. Thanks for joining us for today's episode of the Witness the Fitness Podcast.